Hello there, Aries, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Welcome back to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. We are having a look at October 2024. For all of you singles out there, if you are single and looking for new love, this is the reading for you guys. So we've got a couple of very interesting things happening here in the month of October and the latter part of September here. And they all bode very well for finding and attracting love into your life. Number one, as of September 22nd, we have, of course, entered Libra season. Libra is the sign that is very closely tied with relationships and partnerships of all kinds and especially romantic ones. We've got a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Libra on October 2nd, the day before we've got a Mercury Kazemi, so you can maybe have some clarity about what you want out of love, and it certainly gives you a very clear direct line of communication with the cosmos. So this can be really um, exciting for love. New moons are about new beginnings, attracting new things, and when we have an eclipse, eclipses bring change. They bring sudden turn of events. Um, they bring faded events um, into our lives. Sometimes we can have a repeat of something in our lives here as well. Um, we can have people come back into our lives that maybe we've lost connection with, or maybe we've, you know, been like two ships sailing in the night. And uh, we've missed that connection somewhere along the way. And this is where something can be revived a little bit sometimes. Um, but basically, those eclipses can bring about some unexpected things that we that we didn't anticipate or that we, you know, maybe had lost a little bit of hope for. And certainly love can be very much in the mix there as well. October 4th, very, very important day. Um, as far as love goes, um, Venus is in Scorpio and it's creating a trine to Saturn in Pisces. So this can be where we can really partner with someone who shares your vision. And of course, Venus in Scorpio runs deep. It's love that runs deep. Um, not just superficial connections. So set those intentions uh, around that eclipse, maybe not necessarily right on the day, just because eclipses do tend to be a little bit unpredictable, but set those intentions early in the month and, um, you know, really believe that you can find that love, attract that love, or maybe form a deeper connection with something that is currently just uh, a little bit casual or superficial. We have Imagine Energy coming in here for you guys. And this is beautiful. This is Saturn in Pisces, right? Saturn in Pisces. Pisces energy is very dreamy, very spiritual, um, very creative, and but also sometimes a little bit of a daydreamy energy. But Saturn in Pisces, Saturn Saturn is like, let's get her gut, let's get her done, let's get down to earth, um, let's put a plan in place, let's what what practical steps can we take to bring your daydreams, bring your imagination, bring your fantasies into reality. So it's an awesome energy here. Um, so you can very much um, enhance and embrace the energy of the cosmos to attract yourself love. If you can imagine it, you can create it. We have Between Worlds coming out here for you guys as well. Now, this is card number three. So threes do relate back to manifestation. They also relate back to, it's because it's creation energy, right? And without creation, we can't manifest anything. Um, and so this is that reminder about the creation of your life. Three also relates back to Venus energy there as well. Love, new beginnings, all of that. Um, but the Between Worlds uh, card is representative of you know, the need to stay present because we're not quite done with one situation and we're stepping forward into another. So in the meantime, right, we need to remember to take things one day at a time to enjoy our present moment, right? We don't want to get lost or stuck. We don't want to get stuck or lost too much in the past. And we don't want to like, you know, spend too much time living in the future because then we miss right what's right in front of us. Some of you here as well, maybe have one foot in the door of wanting love, but one foot kind of still in the energy of, oh, I kind of want love, but at the same time, I don't know, right? So you might be a little bit back and forth there um, about love and what it is that you truly do desire, what it is you truly do want. <clears throat> so again, you know, 
part of the way we can navigate that energy is to stay, stay centered, grounded, and focused. That's that Saturn influence that we've got. And, you know, to say, okay, be really honest with ourselves. Be really clear with ourselves. What do I want? Right? Focus on what you want. Cleanse and purge whatever it is that you don't want. And believe. The back of the deck, we've got the Ten of Wands. As some of you have had a lot of stress, a lot of burdens, a lot of challenges, a lot of responsibilities in your life. And tens are a culmination of a cycle, the end of a cycle. So this can really represent that you're about to be rewarded for all of the hard work and effort that you have put into life in general, but also relationships, right? Maybe relationships in the past, you were the one that carried all the burdens. You were the one that, you know, that took responsibility, right? Wasn't reciprocal. What is Libra season really focus on? Balance and harmony in relationships. So this can be something that's very much on the way out the door is this carrying the full load, the full responsibility of the relationship, right? Um, this can also be the stresses that you've had in your life, right? You keep on going, you keep on moving forward, and you just never give up. Ten of Wands can also represent that there may be something that you're still carrying from uh, previous experiences. Um, you know, we don't want to necessarily call it baggage, but, you know, it's kind of all encompassing. Right. And so this can be a really great time of year to cleanse and purge, to dive deep, especially Venus and Scorpio energy. Right. This can really be about where you're very, getting very much connected with your heart space. You're diving beneath the surface to figure out why am I between worlds, right? Why haven't I, you know, really been able to believe that I can have love or why do I seem to be a little bit back and forth, right? So we can do that emotional deep dive to really figure that out because we want to release this 10 of wands, right? We don't want to carry the burden anymore, right? We want to be free. We want to be clear. We want to be open um, and receptive for finding new love into our lives. So not always easy, um, but something that's necessary. But just remember that tens are the end of a cycle and a 10 brings uh, new beginnings. 10 breaks down into a one. One is Aries energy, right? That energy of new beginnings, of a fresh start, of taking action and initiative and moving forward forward in a new and better direction. We've got the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Cups is coming in here as the energy that is activating for you in the month ahead. Now, some of you could be focused on family. Uh, some of you are focused on your own personal happiness. You're done. Ten of Wands, you're done with feeling like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and the Ten of Cups, you're seeing the positivity, you're seeing the potential. You have got a lot of optimism, right, around uh, around love and around life in general, life in itself. Ten of Cups, happy home, happy family, happy children, happy you, happy environment, right? And so it's like I said, can be very much where you are um, focusing on your happiness, on your joy and the things that make you happy. And that's actually a really great place to be, uh, a really great energy that's activating for you there. Let's get a few more cards there with that Ten of Cups and see what else is coming up for you. The Ace of Pentacles, beautiful New Beginnings Justice card. There's the Libra in energy, and we have the Ace of Cups. Holy moly, that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, two Aces. Um, you could have multiple possibilities for finding love. Perhaps you've already made some new connections out there and you're trying to make a decision. Justice card, trying to make a decision, uh, weighing up your options there with that justice card, right? Um, what do I want? Do I want someone emotional? Do I want someone spiritual? Um, do I want someone that's, you know, creative? Uh, or do I want someone ace of pentacles that's, you know, uh, down to earth and uh, reliable and dependable? Granted, it can also be one person that you're attracting in there with those two energies, right? Not only do they have their um, you know, their, their heart on their sleeve and a lot of love to give. They are also, um, it also does show that there's a seed of potential there for that long term stability and security in that relationship. So it's beautiful energy. Aces carry a little bit of luck. Aces carry new beginnings. So a lot of new fresh energy that's surrounding you. And that's not really surprising here, Aries, because we do actually have a full moon in your sign on the 17th of October. And this new beginning here is uh, 
very much tied to the cleansing of the old, right? Um, we are in the middle of eclipse season, like I said earlier. So of course, expect the unexpected, big shifts happening right through, right through until 2025 actually is when we've got, uh, some very interesting things going on. And yeah, it's like a massive turning point for some of you here. Full moon in your sign is always the culmination of a cycle, right? The end of a cycle, things can come to fruition for you in your life as well. Look back at the new moon that we had in your sign um, at uh, earlier in the year. And what were your intentions? Where were you headed? What were you doing? What new start were you manifesting? Because, hey, we've got some new stuff that is all coming in here. But of course, this can just be representative of the fact that Justice Card Libran season is bringing you this fresh energy. And we want to take advantage of that. Like I said, the aces are lucky. They are also the seed of something new, something exciting. The ace of cups, so it also brings peace and healing, right? And uh, the ace of pentacles, that can be some big luck coming in. Um, but the justice card here is, you know, again, that Libra and energy, honesty and truth. And this brings in the energy of balance and harmony. If any of you have had some legal situations going on, uh, the justice card can show that there might be a resolution to that. Okay. Um, some of you may have been focused on your money on your career path and you could actually have some new job um, or a promotion or a raise or some improvements in your financial situation coming in here as well. And of course, what does that do? It kind of alleviates a little bit of stress and it puts us on the path to being a little bit more open to love because it's hard to really be truly open to love when we've got a whole bunch of other stuff going on. So you could have all of that going on, but the justice card can also, of course, bring about new beginnings. Now, can I just... Uh, uh, I'm just going to point you to all the ones that you've got showing up. Two tens, okay, ten, ten, but they do break down into a one, right? So ten of wands, a one, the ten of cups, a one, ace of pentacles, a one, ace of cups, a one, and the justice card in this deck is number 11. All right, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six ones coming out. Go look up the deeper meaning of all of those ones. New, 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 all over the board. For you guys, very exciting. We have the magician, another number one. <laughs> okay, this is crazy. Um, I don't think I've ever done a reading with all these ones. So very significant time for you guys. But the magician is the blessings that are headed your way this month. And this is your power to focus and create whatever it is that you want. Attract whatever it is you want. Manifest whatever it is you want. Remember from your very first card with the imagine card is that message that if you can believe it, if you can dream it, if you can imagine it, you can create it and turn it into reality. You might need to take some practical steps. You might need to, you know, do a little bit of work on your um, emotional body or on your spiritual body, but you can, you can attract it. You can create it. So awesome, awesome energy there. You're really standing in your own personal power. Thank you. With that magician energy there, you can have the find the resources that you need. And uh, again, a little bit of magic in the air for you guys. We've got the hanged man tower, expect the unexpected. And we've got the seven of wands. Now, here's the funny thing in that. Now, we sometimes look at the tower and people are like, oh, my God, I don't want a tower. Right. Because we sometimes think, oh, my world is going to be destroyed. And yes, the tower can sometimes feel that way. Remember, this is in your blessings position, the energy benefiting you the most, okay, that's activating this month. So we will start with the tower, right? And the tower can bring sudden unexpected change, a sudden unexpected turn of events, something that shatters your current life as you know it and makes through makes space for something new, um, life changing uh, quite often. Now, quite often what happens and especially where we do have the tower right beside the hanged man. Remember at the beginning of your reading, I said that right before this new moon at the beginning of the month on October 1st, we have Mercury making a Kazemi with the sun. And this can bring you clarity. It can also bring communication and it can bring some very interesting events or some interesting people or something into your life as well. It's like it, the Kazemi is really when the planet is so close to the sun that it's like in the heart of the sun. So Mercury, information, communication, um, 
And again, it can be like a massive epiphany that's totally earth shattering. And when we have the hanged man right beside it, this does bring in enlightenment. But the hanged man, even though the hanged man is like nothing's happening, right? Remember that a pause before some action is the blessing. All right. And because this does bring clarity because we're stepping into the flow, we're clearing our um, we're clearing our mind, we're clearing our energy, we're releasing resistance to things. And this is quite often where we do get enlightenment. So uh, you could be having a big massive epiphany moment and this can bring in the tower, right? Because, you know, if we do look at the tower card, we've got lightning hitting the crown, right? So something coming through your crown chakra. And this changes how you look at things, changes how you do things, changes how you feel about things even, right? And this is the crumbling away of the old and to welcome in the new. Now, the tower can also just be this sudden release, right? And especially where we do have the uh, justice card coming in there, we do have stress and burdens and things with the uh, Ten of Wands. If any of you do have kind of something that's lingering from a past relationship, especially any kind of legal scenarios, it could all of a sudden, after a period of delay with the hanged man, suddenly everything gets resolved. Okay, all of a sudden there's movement. All right. And with the seven of wands sitting here as well, this can actually really put you in the driver's seat. OK, um, but this is really making you feel a little bit more powerful and more confident about your situation. So you could have a very sudden turn of events um, with that. If you've got anything like that coming along, the magician can potentially be somebody who is uh, who you can consult. Um, you know, uh, who can maybe just like kind of seemingly waves their magic wand and all of a sudden all of this stuff gets, um, gets cleared out for you, um, and resolved for you. And so that can be really wonderful. Maybe you get like a new lawyer or something like that, or, you know, a new judge steps in or something. Um, but whatever it is, it can certainly be something that frees you up. For the future. But this seven of wands can also show that you are confident, you're turning, you're facing things head on. You know what your boundaries are in what you're looking for in a relationship. You know what you're willing to accept and what you are not willing to accept. And you're very clear and firm in your conviction and you don't mind standing up for yourself in that energy there as well. Now I will say, I do have to say that um, there is a potential, okay, for something to come out of the would work here. All right. For some of you. And, um, I do feel that if someone tries to come back in that you've dated before seven of wands, you are standing your ground, you're advocating for yourself and you're like, no way, Jose. And, uh, you know, and this can be like maybe that closed closure that you need. Cause remember all of this is a blessing. Okay. It's not a negative. It is a blessing for you. All right, clearing the path, making way for something new. The Seven of Swords is your advice from spirit. Be careful who you trust, but also remember to trust yourself. All right, the Seven of Swords can represent that energy of mistrust, miscommunication, misunderstandings, um, all of those things. Sometimes we think that someone's being a little sneaky and stealthy, right? Or, you know, this is something that we're kind of carrying from our past, right? Especially if your trust has ever been broken, very hard to trust again. Um, but the Seven of Swords is, uh, you know, your advice from spirit really saying that not everyone is cut from the same cloth. And, you know, sometimes we need to go through those challenging experiences so that we can appreciate something better when it does come in. Um, so trust yourself, trust your instincts, um, make sure that you are communicating clearly and openly, not just with yourself, but also with others. And uh, you could certainly be on the path. Um, a better path forward. Seven of Swords also does come in with a little stealthy energy as well. And so again, right back to, you know, if someone does try and come back in, eclipses, right, it happens. Um, if someone does try and come back in, they're trying to sneak back into your life here. Um, but you're like, hm, no, and that's where that Seven of Wands comes in, right, really to kind of you know, keep you, uh, keep you in your own energy. Um, and really you are, you stand in your power, right? Remember the magician, you're standing in your power as well. Hang man, letting go, surrender. No way, Jose, goodbye, right? So if someone does try and sneak back in, assess your situation accordingly, right? Take a hot minute with that hanged man and then make your decision, whatever that looks like to you. 
But with that Seven of Swords, again, it kind of does speak to the Between Worlds card, right? Because, you know, we've got, you know, these swords in our hand, right? And we're like, okay, I've got these. We keep looking back. And, you know, so it's like a little bit of back and forth energy. We're trying to stay positive. We're trying to figure out what we want, but something keeps drawing us back. So that's really worth exploring for yourself if you are finding yourself in this between worlds energy. We've got the page of wands as your overall outcome for your reading. And this is awesome energy because the page of wands can certainly be some new information, some new people coming into your life, a new sense of adventure. Um, it can be something very exciting. And the page of um, wands does quite often indicate that there's something very wonderful uh, going on in your world that is related to your manifestation, whether it's just you and your outlook and your positive vibe that's putting you out there um, or whether it's someone new coming in, very exciting energy there for you. And again, very tied to your manifestations. We've got the Hermit card, Two of Cups, beautiful, and Temperance. So we've got Virgo energy, we've got uh, Sagittarian energy with that. So hey, maybe by uh, maybe by Sagittarian season, okay, end of November to uh, just before Christmas there, um, maybe by then you will be attracting new love into your life with that. Um, the Hermit card can certainly be this healing path, right? It can be this soul searching, like getting, you know, really, really getting to know what it is you want. You're looking for guidance or you're setting your intentions, putting that star in that lantern that lights your way can be really wonderful energy. But we've got the two of cups here as well. And the two of cups can be two hearts coming together, true love, soulmate energy, right? Um, now this can be about a focus on balance within you and within your life and just trusting the process and knowing that there will be love that you're attracting in. You're being very calm and patient with the temperance card. But we do have, you know, this energy of a balanced, harmonious partnership, though, right? Two of cups, balanced and harmonious. It's like, oh, hey, how's it going? You're meeting your counterpart in another. The temperance card is an energy of balance and patience and healing. It's also one of a guardian angel card, so a soulmate connection coming right in here for you. Um, this can also be with the the hermit card and the temperance card, right? Very both spiritual energies. So you could be attracting a person towards you that really does dig your vibe and maybe they've had their spiritual awakening as well, or maybe you're meant to forge this path together. Um, this is a very calm energy between all of these, right? So something exciting or, you know, this is you really trusting the process. Um, in the meantime, you're being very calm, grounded, down to earth. You're being very patient and you are trusting that the universe, that the angels, that your guides will bring you the love that you deserve and that you're looking for. But we do have two energies of healing here as well. The Hermit card can bring in healing. Uh, the Temperance card can bring in healing here as well. And then that Two of Cups. So should the uh, opportunity present itself and should it be something that you want all right. Um, there could be a possibility of repairing a past relationship. OK, or where you are being brought back together with someone from a past life or a past experience. Right. This can come in here with this particular uh, with this particular energy there as well. Right. Um, and it can simply be a misconnection. And sometimes we make these connections and we're like, you know, with sparks fly. Right. Page one sparks can fly. And, you know, we make them and then they kind of disappear they go poof in the night right and you know maybe it's like a an old friend or a colleague or maybe just somebody that you used to run into when you go and get lunch or something like that and all of a sudden they're just they're gone they disappear right well maybe that this is uh can be that energy where they all of a sudden do pop right back in and uh when you least expect it because it can be a timing thing quite often um you know but the spark is still very much alive OK, so some of you could have that going on as well. But whatever your situation is, there's healing of self as well. So there's healing coming in for you as well. So let's grab you a couple of more cards out here and see what your final messages are. Remember to check out all of those ones, right? Very, very significant in your reading. Um, doesn't 
<laughs> Never had that many ones come out before. So uh, I love that for you guys. Very much love that for you. 11, really, 11. Okay, there we go. I am intuitive uh, talking about ones. You have a keen awareness of what is happening around you. A strong intuition is your gift and will help you understand the unspoken feelings and thoughts of others. This insight allows you to be a great outside, a great, great, excuse me, guide and supporter. I am intuitive. Wow. Okay. And we've got number nine. There's that Virgo card, right? Nine. It is your compassion that makes you shine. You're devoted to helping the greater good and have a strong talent for speaking up for others. And that's that seven of wands, right? Advocate for ourselves and others. Um, your soul is most satisfied when you are being of service. I am compassionate. Beautiful cards, beautiful messages. I hope that there was something here that resonated with you. If there was, please do like, share, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. I thank you so much. Um, and I certainly wish you all the best of luck on your path, on your journey to finding love. Remember, stay present. All right. And be open to all possibilities. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.